Georgetta Gankars here, and today I want to talk to you about how you can make your own studio space. And students always ask me, well, I don't have the room, I just live in an apartment. Or maybe you do have the room, but you don't know how to go about setting up the space. So let's talk about that. Um, first of all, you need a space that is accessible. And by accessible, I mean that you're able to go in and out of the space without any problem. There is really nothing in your way. Um, you can bring paintings and carry them in and out. You also need a space that is level. So you don't want to be painting um, if you're, sometimes you might be painting in a room and the floor is uneven. You can't have your easel straight. Um, and you, so you need a space that's accessible. You need a space that also has a window. And a window is very important in the space because you need some kind of ventilation. You can also have a fan. If you're painting with oils and acrylics, you definitely need ventilation, um, especially if you're painting with oils. Not so much watercolors, um, but definitely oils because of the solvents. And you have to paint safely. So that means you would need an open window plus a fan and if you don't have that, you're going to have to at least have some kind of um, access to fresh air. So if you're working in a closet, you might not have that. So you have to be near at least a ventilated window. The next thing that you have to do is you have to have a space to dispose of your solvents. So if you're using oils, you can never throw your turpentine or your turpenoid or your linseed oil down the sink or the toilet. Um, if you're using acrylics, you really don't want to throw the dirty water down the sink or the toilet either because it can stop up the sink and the toilet, maybe not right away. It's also not good for the environment. So how do you do that? The best thing to do is to get a bucket. If you're painting with oils, you can get a drum. If you don't have access to that, you can just get a bucket, but make sure that you line the bucket. You can get like a plastic bucket. Um, some students will use metal, but the thing is, like I said, you have to make sure that if you're doing that, you're lining it very well. So anyway, I just use a bucket and I line it with garbage bags at least three times. And then I take crumbled newspaper and I throw it in to that garbage bag. And then I pour the solvents on top of that and let them soak into the newspaper. And then I throw it out where you can throw out hazardous waste. So if you live in your condominium, you have to find out where you can throw out hazardous waste. Because if you're throwing out all solvents and they're soaked paper, it can be very flammable and that can be very dangerous. You also don't want to leave these flammable uh, solvents in your home. You need to store them properly and I'll do another video on that. But um, there are ways you can work with oil safely. You just have to take a little bit of an extra precaution. With the acrylics, you can dilute the solvent before you throw it again into your bucket that's going to be lined with uh, garbage bags and newspaper. And what I do is I dilute the paint first so I can pour my dirty solvent. If you had like a, a, a large, uh, I guess, another bucket or if you had uh, another kind of container, you could just pour the solvent in there and pour extra water in there so it dilutes. In other words, you're just diluting the dirty solvent and then throwing the diluted solvent into the garbage uh, bucket that you have with the double lined garbage bags and the newspaper and letting that soak in there and then throwing that out. Again, you can never, never, never throw any kind of paint solvent down the sink or the toilet. Um, you, I advise if you're painting with acrylics or oils to get a sifter so you can sift the paint out first. And the way you would clean your brushes is I take my uh, brushes and I swirl them around in whatever solvent that I'm getting the paint off the brushes. Um, but before I do that, I try to get a rag and take out as much paint as I can with the rag first. And then I s take it in the solvent. So by time it's going, if you had acrylics, by time you're putting it in the water, there's hardly no paint on the brush. Or by time you're, if you're cleaning your uh, oil brushes and you're putting them in your solvent, there's hardly no paint on there when you're cleaning your brushes. Um, this is, makes it easier. So again, 
a place that has ventilation, a place that has a proper disposable system. The next thing that you'll want to think about is a flat surface that you're painting on. So if you have a standing easel like this, I recommend getting an easel that you can um, have stationary and you can move in case you needed to move your easel around the room. Um, according to the light, maybe you're painting from the light, natural light from the window, or you have tungsten light or whatever. So that's, you see, I have a large easel back there with that painting on it. And these are smaller easels, but they do um, the justice of also painting plain air and at the same time um, being able to uh, fold them up and carry them outside or have them be a, a smaller easel. Um, the other thing is you might invest, if you wanted to or not, here's a tabletop easel. So this easel is very popular because you can have it as a tabletop and you can also at the same time um, extend it and make it longer where it's a standing easel. So choose one easel, the one that works best for you. If you like to work plain air, I recommend getting one of these easels. They pack up really well uh, in a small carrying case. If not, then get a, an easel like this where you can kind of extend the easel and have it as a standing easel too. You need a flat surface to paint on. So I have a table. And if you don't have a table, I'll show you what I do. And again, this is the carrying case for the easel. What I do is I have a setup here where you can just have a regular table. So if you had a closet, you could just build this inside of a closet. All you need is a flat surface with a tabletop. Get this. You can put a piece of cardboard or paper so you don't mess up your desk. Um, I recommend getting plastic. You can get it like from the dollar store and get plastic and throw it on the floor if you don't want to mess up your rugs. Um, this way you can just throw out the plastic if you spill. A lot of artists do spill things on the rugs and if you get it on your flooring or your rugs you will not be happy. So just get like a plastic tablecloth and you can throw it on the floor um, or you can get a tarp. Um, and you need your palette. You know you have space to mix. That's the most important thing because you don't want your paints to be muddy. Um, you need your palette knives. If you're doing watercolors, you know, you would need your well. And you have your brushes here. And what I do is I have my paints in containers, in different containers. So this is for a small painting I'm doing. This is for another painting. And I have all those colors um, already organized. So I know that I can just take that bucket with me. You might also have a computer um, if you want to do some imaging um, on your... Uh, on your pieces. A lot of times students will take a picture of their painting and process and look at it on the computer or their uh, laptop or their large television to blow it up and play with the colors maybe in Photoshop to see if you wanted to put a color there or not. Um, it's up to you. Um, the other thing that you would need is really good lighting. So usually if I'm painting um, and the light constantly changes, I might close the shades and just have a constant light uh, in the studio. If that doesn't work, um, because if you're painting during the day or in the middle of the day and the light drastically changes, your painting is going to look different. So you really have to think about if you're near a window, um, how are you going to keep that constant light source? Because again, if the, you're painting in the day and the light goes down in the evening, or you're painting at the time when the light is constantly changing, your painting is going to look different. So you might invest in shades um, and just get a constant light uh, source that you would be using the same source of light. Um, the other thing is, the most you need a pencil. You need your uh, pens. I usually have my uh, drawing pencils, my charcoal, my pens all on the desk so I can do my sketches, my watercolor paper. Even if I'm using oils and acrylics, it's also helpful to have watercolor paper to do my swatches and my sketches from. And uh, this way it's a little bit more organized when I'm doing a painting. Uh, if you need a color wheel, you would want to have your color wheel. And everything that you have, you know, I have a color wheel here, everything you want to have, you want to have accessible to you. And the last thing is you need a sense of relaxation. So when you're painting, you have to really think about what 
what puts you in the mood to paint. So for me, if I'm listening to music, I always listen to my music in my earphones. I never listen to the music out loud. So you don't want to disturb your neighbors, right? So you just put in the, put in your earphones and listen to your favorite kind of music that you wanted to listen to. Uh, if you Whether that be from your laptop or your phone, just get those earphones handy and then just start painting. Sometimes students like to read a book and that puts them in the mood. But again, you need proper ventilation, you need a flat surface, if you can, a tabletop easel so you can set down uh, your palette. Um, if you want to get an easel that's versatile, that's even better because you can have it for plain air, painting outside, or you can have it for in the studio, or you can have it as a desktop or a standing easel. So that would be the benefit of that type of easel. But um, hopefully this helps you. You know, make sure you have the correct lighting, make sure you have a comfortable chair. It's good to have snacks around you um, and not to be distracted. Um, so if you can choose a place that's kind of quiet um, in your, whether it's in your condo or if you're building, um, you know, I know a lot of artists that sometimes have a house and they're going out and they're building an addition to the house where they're painting outside or if you are having in your apartment, just make sure it's a place where you can go to um, where you can, you know, focus on just creating. So hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you in class. Ciao.